10. We're just going to check if the stream is up. Uh, Twitch recently reset all the stream keys, so we're just making sure that everything's up and working. Right, and we're going to get started in a little over a minute. Um, sit tight, grab some water if you need. Hello everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, welcome to week six, Big Jam and Community. I'm actually super excited for this lecture um, because this is a new lecture. We did not teach it in this way last semester. So thank you for coming. Um, let me actually turn on this TV. Um, but both of the presenters can continue. Hello everyone, welcome to the yeah, so today we're going to be discussing um, mostly Fig Jam and Figma community. Later in the course towards um, weeks 10 and 11, we're going to dive into some more things with community. Next week, we're also going to be talking about plugins, which is another big part of community. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about places to find design inspiration. Um, before that, uh, we wanted to do a quick um, uh, temperature check on the midterm, um, but the attendance form for the day uh, should be at yelkey.com slash yes. Um, I've thus far been really lucky with the yell keys because sometimes there's like slash death or like slash like really scary things. Um, so I've been pretty lucky. But today's is yelkey.com slash yes. Again, this link is only going to work for the next, I think, three or so hours. So if you're watching this on a later day, just make sure that you use the link that we send um, in the Slack later on. Yeah, go ahead and open that up if you want it. Again, you can always do these after the fact as well. Um, so before we dive into today's content, I wanted to get a really quick temperature check from everybody um, about the midterm project. So uh, hopefully you know that we're doing it. Um, hopefully everyone's aware that the midterm is going on um, and it's going to be due this coming Monday. So seven days from now, Monday at 11.59 p.m., not at 6 p.m. It's due end of the night, 11.59 p.m. If you need an extension, please let us know as soon as possible, um, even if you just think you need an extension, if you have anything going on, um, please do let us know. We don't want to be like super punitive about it, um, and we'll make sure that we figure something out that works for you. So for those of you that are currently physically here, um, hold up a number for if you've chosen a prompt, if you started brainstorming, if you started designing, kind of where you are in the process 
so I can see. Now, if you're on um, Twitch right now, type it in the chat so we can take a look at it later, just so we get a sense of where everyone is. F fingers up. Okay, awesome. Lots of ones and twos, that's totally fine. I don't expect anyone really to, to do a two-week midterm like the first weekend. You're fine. Um, so if you're in that process of uh, brainstorming right now, that's excellent. Um, once you've chosen a prompt, there's a lot that you can dive into. And so today's um, final part of the lecture is going to talk about a couple of different ways you can quickly find inspiration um, if you're like tired of looking through your Instagram saved. So yeah, um, any questions about the midterm? Okay, awesome. Any questions in the chat from Twitch? Any questions in the chat? Okay, no? Awesome. Um, so again, the midterm is due on Monday, 11.59 p.m. There is one automatic project slip day that can be applied to either the midterm or the final, whatever is going to get you the most points, um, which means an extra 24 hours to submit without any penalty. But yeah, with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and talk about FigJam. So FigJam is a secondary tool to Figma, um, specifically created for things like brainstorming, collaboration, and a lot more. So you can think of FigJam as kind of one big playground or whiteboard that's really focused on that collaborative aspect that Figma leans really into. So like Figma, FigJam is vector-based and incorporates um, a kind of different set of tools that allows for better life brainstorming, diagramming, meetings, working. Um, within your teams. So you're going to see that the suite of tools is a little bit scoped down and it's a little bit different from what you'd normally see in Figma, but it's made to be easier to pick up. So it's not made to be just a super complex tool that's going to take you hours and hours to learn. It's there for you to just immediately jump in and start working on it. So at first glance, the FigJam workspace is pretty pared down. It looks pretty simple. You notice that there's no sidebars that you would normally have. You notice that there's no toolbar at the top. Instead, you have this smaller toolbar at the bottom. Um, and this houses all of the kind of different things that you're going to be using. And kind of similar to things like the Notes app or other kind of note-taking tools, you see that it has these like, like the pencil icon, like things that are just feel a little bit more fun, things that are a little bit more playful. Um, and you see it's kind of hard to tell right here, but the background is like a dotted grid. Um, so it's easy to line things up, make sure that they're all um, to spec, um, even if you're just doing some whiteboarding. But yeah, the top right toolbar that you see kind of right here has a small selection of tools that we're going to walk through now. Um, so like in Figma, the top right is going to have um, the navigation and the collaborative tools. So you see the audio icon, you see anybody who's on the file, including yourself, the share button. Um, a couple things that are different are the zooming has like these plus minus buttons that are a little bit easier to click, so you can kind of go in and out really quickly. Um, and then the comment tool is no longer on the left, it's on the right. Still the same functionality, it's still the same comments, they're just there. Um, but the most fun part is this um, collaboration tools menu that's indicated by this sparkle icon. Um, so within this menu, there's a couple of different unique tools that Figma doesn't necessarily have, including the emotes, stamps, um, cursor chat, which Figma has, um, the high five um, which we showed in the first lecture, which I'm very excited about. I think it's super fun. Um, and then also the timer, which is a widget um, that lets you basically time things. So we're going to walk through all of these kind of unique tools um, as well today. The bottom toolbar has um, actually a pretty different selection of tools. So the moving panning, all of the navigation is exactly the same. You're not going to have to relearn how to just move across your screen. Um, but the default um, kind of tool that you're going to be working with or set of tools are the marker the shapes, and the sticky notes. So in Figma, you might not actually use the pencil tool super often um, because it's going to create all these vectors and it becomes a lot of different pieces that you're working with. Um, but with the marker tool in FigJam, it's simplified, um, so it's a lot easier to use. And then you're going to walk through all of these um, basic tools that you're going to use. But it, the idea is that these things are going to mimic stuff that you would normally do in real life. So if you're on a physical whiteboard, you'd be taking your um, dry erase marker, whatever it is, drawing on the board. If you're working on, you know, paper on your desk, you'd be using sticky notes, putting them down, moving them around really easily. So it's there to mimic real life kind of whiteboarding tools. Obviously, you don't like have paper cut out shapes, but those shapes are really useful for diagrams and diagramming um, flows and things like that. Yeah, so the marker tool um, with Fee's very lovely uh, drawings here um, is similar a lot, again, to the pencil tool and can be used to draw and notate. It automatically smooths out any um, jagged lines like we talked about before, the same as the pencil tool. 
Um, but some things to note is that it's basically simplified and pared down. You can't edit nodes on the lines, um, but you can adjust the color and stroke size. And you're going to notice that FigJam has this kind of suite of eight or nine colors um, and these two kind of stroke sizes, and it's pretty limited in that. And the idea there is that they want you to focus on what you're working on, as opposed to focusing on these fine details of like color, lines, that kind of thing. That's not really important when you're trying to get all of the ideas out of your brain and when you're trying to talk to other people. So you can quickly access um, the marker pen tool through M. I think you can also use P. I just have like a habit of that. So if you're used to pressing P or even shift P when you're in Figma, I believe those um, uh, shortcuts should still work in um, FigJam. The shape tool is used to create shapes. Um, these are a little bit different from the standard shape tools in Figma uh, for two main reasons. One, they don't automatically create vector networks that you can edit. There's not a way to edit vector networks in FigJam, like with a pen tool. And they won't have these smart shape properties that you might be used to. So you can't do things like rounding the edges or pulling the circle to be like a half circle. But um, the second difference is that there's a lot more preset tools. So these tools are really common in diagramming, often used to signify different actions. So for example, you might use one shape anytime you say, hey, this point of the flow is where the user has to make a decision. Then you use another shape for saying, hey, this is the end of the flow. This is like a final state. So having all these different shapes there for you, um, one matches existing convention in tools like Miro and tools like Mural, which have very similar names. Um, and also just in earlier convention, people would make these things in like Word documents or in Google Slides. So this is an existing pattern that FigJam is following um, and it makes it available to you as well. Once you put down a shape through whatever tool is here, um, you can change the fill color and the outline style. Um, you can have one of eight colors like we mentioned before or no fill um, through clicking this eye. And then um, if you have these set this way, um, the strokes are also coordinated to match the fill and they cannot be changed to another color. Again, this is just to make things more simple. So just keep it in mind that you can't have like a blue square with a black line, sorry. <laughs> Um, but you can change the outline of the stroke to be a little bit different um, if you want to make it solid dash none. Um, and you're going to notice also that in FigJam, something new that's not in Figma is this kind of hovering toolbar that appears right above whatever you have selected. So normally when you're in Figma, when you select something, you're going to use those sidebars to give you all of the information, to change the color, to change the text. Um, but in here, there's this kind of like... Uh, it's like magnetically attached almost thing that hovers above all of your um, objects when you select them. Um, so that's an easy way to quickly edit things without having to move your mouse very far. Yep. And you can see that it's going to change a lot of the time depending on what you're doing. And in this case, you can actually add text directly into those shapes um, to be different sizes. You can have all of the standard um, text formatting functionalities like bold strike through, links, bullets, italics, centering, that good stuff. Um, it's all going to work pretty functionally the same as you would be used to. Um, and you have different text sizes that are pre-selected. So another thing that you are not going to be able to necessarily edit is the font. And there's preset text sizes that you can swap between um, that are like header, title, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, basically adding words to these shapes allows you to add information to your diagrams. So you could say something like, um, at this point, the user has to decide um, to click on the continue button or click on the back button. You can put that information pared down or pared down into the shape itself. So in a diagram, the second part that follows shapes is the connectors. Connectors allow you to basically create paths or connections between shapes, objects, text, anything that you have on your file. They can also be used to annotate, call attention to anything in a file or just you know, they're arrows. You can have them point at stuff. Um, the keyboard shortcut for connectors is X, but you're also going to see that anytime you have a shape selected, there's an easy way to add it um, through like a plus button that shows up um, that just gives you the affordance to add a connector. So making connections um, between two shapes is pretty easy. That's that plus button I just mentioned that shows up whenever you click on something and hover near an edge. So when you're about to connect two items, you can go ahead and just click that object, hover to the right, you're going to see the plus, drag it out. And you're going to notice that this functions a lot like prototyping. So if you got to try out prototyping, you see that anytime you want to add a connector um, there, you're going to just select an object and then the plus sign appears. Same logic here. Yeah, you can also um, draw another shape directly by adding a connector. So if you add a connector to nothing, it's going to make a new shape automatically. 
um, so that you can just really quickly diagram without having to place and then switch tools, place, switch tools. It's just doing it for you. And something to note also is that from the shape, you can change what kind of shape it is. So if you do this, then you need it to be like a diamond that's yellow. You can do it um, without having to put down a new shape as well. Uh, the connectors can be adjusted through these kind of smart nodes that appear on them. There's lots of these like elbows that you can make um, in order to have them move around your diagrams the way that you want them to. Also, it's kind of fun to try to get them into a loop-de-loop. -loop. Um, and straight lines can also be converted into elbows or just made into like diagonal straight lines. Whatever you want, lots of flexibility there. Yeah. Libraries are a really interesting way that they've integrated pieces from Figma into FigJam itself. So if you've been making components, if you've been making all of your buttons components, if you're making all your text inputs components, you can actually also access them in FigJam by turning on libraries like we talked about before. So FigJam has also provided a couple of default libraries that you can use that are mostly stickers. So they're very fun things that you can add, like this really lovely hand heart emoji going on uh, that you can add to your files and just make them a little bit more fun. Um, they're made by the Figma team or people that they've hired um, to create these different sticker sets. Um, and they function like components as well. So you saw earlier with this hand, it's actually a variant that has different skin tones. Um, so you can actually go in and see how the variance menu is going to work whenever you put down a sticker or component in FigJam. Um, so I would highly recommend if you ever want to have, for example, like a brainstorming file that goes with your existing um, design file, you have it as a library, you publish the library, and then you access them in FigJam so you can reference them whenever you need. Now, if you don't know what to do to get started with FigJam, if you're kind of opening this file or looking at it and not really sure on what you want to tackle, there's a lot of really helpful community created and Figma created templates to help users get started on FigJam. So if you think like, hey, this seems like a good tool to do a brainstorm or to do a diagram, but you don't know where to start, you can go ahead and click this small templates icon in the toolbar itself that looks like a template, a website maybe, um, and then access it. Um, a lot of different templates um, that show you different ways that you can use FigJam um, to kind of maximize the power of that particular tool. Um, images can also be pasted, inserted directly into FigJam. This is another appearance of our favorite cat. Um, and then the image edit, oh my gosh, I did not know she added this. Um, but you can basically alter the images however you want. Um, functionally pretty similar to Figma, um, just in a different toolbar. Again, it's gonna be this floating toolbar. She's showing all of the different tools here um, with the way that the uh, crop works, with the way that the rotation works, the way that the zoom works. Um, and then you can confirm that you've finished your edit um, by doing that. Um, again, you can just insert them like you would normally through the um, toolbar. It has a uh, image icon right here, or you can just paste stuff in. You can copy paste different things to and from Figma and FigJam. So use this to your advantage. Um, a lot of the time you don't want to remake a diagram in Figma. You can just go ahead and copy it right in there for you. Okay, the fun tools. Um, the stamp and the emote wheels are very unique to FigJam. They don't exist currently in Figma, and they add like a new layer of fun and kind of excitement or just kind of um, passive um, interaction when you're on a file. So for example, with the emotes, um, you're going to be able to have it like show the stream of icons coming up that you might see in like a live stream, for example. And with stamps, it's more permanent. Um, they kind of stay there as objects on the file whenever you use them. And um, we'll show them in a little bit. Um, but here you can see the emotes happening where you can click and hold to have this stream of like, oh, wow, the frame rate is really bad. Um, you have this kind of stream of emojis come up. So if somebody else is presenting and you're following them on a file or they're doing their critique and they show something that you really like, you can just show really quickly, like press and hold for a second um, to show your appreciation for them. And the keyboard shortcut for that is E, and you can also access it through the um, stamps tool in the toolbar. So this combination of different stickers, stamps, emotes, all these different like fun features of FigJam are super versatile. You can get used to the way that your team likes to use them. So for example, this was um, the document we had for planning how we were going to do labs. Uh, so we had an all hands meeting that was actually held entirely on FigJam. Um, and then we kind of discussed different ideas that we had, and then we voted on ideas that we agreed with by putting down those plus one stickers. So you could really easily visually tell like, hey, people gravitated to this idea. And it was just more fun than having to do like a little Google form poll or like a Zoom poll or anything like that. Um, they're also just cute. 
She is really using this picture of her cat a lot, and it's really good. So the timer is also something that is really, really helpful, especially for things like running meetings, running brainstorms, um, even running labs. We're going to be using it this week in lab as well. Um, but say you're in a situation where you tell someone like, hey, let's let's look at this for five minutes. And then you need to pull up your phone. You need to turn on your phone audio to make sure that it goes off in five minutes. And someone has to go find music and you play for five minutes. And it's really annoying. Um, so there's a built-in timer in FigJam that syncs across everybody in the file. So everyone who has the file open at that time, the timer will show up and be um, on the same amount of time. People can add extra time at the end. So if you're going on a brainstorm and people aren't done, you can just really quickly add another minute. And it also plays a little bit of audio just as a countdown at the end and to signal that it's done so that everyone, even if you're off tab, knows that um, whatever you're doing is finished. So this built-in timer is like a deceptively easy way to just like make your meetings go a lot smoother without having to like scramble for other tools at the same time. So you can be really focused in on the file whenever you need. Now the high fives are fun. We talked about them. They're very cute. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can basically, whenever you're in a file with another person, you can high five them. Or if you have two tabs open, you can also high five yourself, um, but you can do it through the collaborative tools button um, in the toolbar at the top. You can just wiggle your cursor left and right like that. I know on Macs that kind of makes your cursor really big, but it should still work. Um, or you can just hold down the hand key, the H key. Um, so once you move near another person's cursor, if it's close enough, you will high five. It's cute. Um, and I mentioned earlier how you can move between FigJam, Figma, and vice versa. Um, so when you want to do this, um, you can just copy paste really easily. So anything that you copy in Figma, you can paste into FigJam. Anything that you copy in FigJam, you can paste into Figma. And the interesting part there is that if you go from FigJam to Figma and you bring something like a sticky, a connector, it's going to actually treat it as those objects in Figma. So it has these kind of new icons that show you like, hey, this is a sticky note. Hey, this is a connector. And they're kind of treated purpley um, as they are FigJam objects. Um, so you're going to be able to interact with them with some of this functionality that still exists in FigJam. So with a connector, when you paste it over, you're going to be able to still edit those nodes a little bit. With a sticky note, you can still edit the text. Um, it's not going to have the exact same um, UI like the toolbar, but it's going to let you be pretty flexible. So with that, we're going to do a demo and there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. So we're using uh, Fig Figma's official FigJam basics um, demo uh, made by Kelly Lee, and you can access it by going to yelkycom slash technology. If you have your computer with you, I highly recommend that you go through it um, as I talk through it, but I'm also going to show you um, in case you just want to watch. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. Um, when you go to that website, yelkycom slash technology, again, got super lucky with the, the words there. Um, you can just go ahead and duplicate it, and then it'll make a file in your drafts. We're going to walk through this, so any questions that you have as we go through, please just raise your hand and ask to clarify something. Um, if you want to go ahead, that's, that's okay. I'm going to go at a, a little bit of a slower pace, um, just so that we're all on the same page. Yeah, anybody having trouble finding the file? I hope that the yell keyword. It is taking its sweet time here. Okay, so yeah, off the bat, Couple things to note. Um, again, no sidebars. It also means no pages. And instead, you have this kind of infinite canvas going on. It's not actually infinite, it does have edges, but they're kind of hard to get to, um, so don't worry too much. It should place you automatically in the center of the file. So you have plenty of room on all sides to expand. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just zoom right in here to this first page, Fig Jump Basics, um, and start here. So stickies are um, one of the core tools of FigJam, definitely the easiest thing to be using. Um, you can quickly create a sticky by pressing S, so I'm going to press S on my keyboard, and you have this kind of hovering sticky that's showing where it's going to go once you click, so I'm going to place it right here. Um, and then I can make another one really quickly by pressing um, Control enter or Command enter I'm going to place one right next to it. I actually did not know that. I just learned that just now. Um, but then um, you'll see that anytime you want to move something around, it's going to have similar alignment tools to the way that Figma works. Um, and you can, you can drag things around however you need. Once I have this selected, here you have that toolbar that we mentioned earlier. Um, something that's interesting here is this little like quill with a signature icon that shows your name. So I can toggle this on or off. Um, this is helpful if you are having a conversation with multiple people and you want to have people 
um, write anonymously, so you can just have it turned off, or if you want to know who wrote everything, you can have them turned on. You know, go ahead here, um, type stuff something, hello, 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 um, I can make it bold, I can make it italic, I think, um, I can make it, yeah, it doesn't show anything here, but you can make it italic, I can cross stuff out, anything that you need to do um, can work here. Um, I can also have bullets in here, um, we are very big fans of bullets ever since Figma finally added them. Um, and I can also change the text size, so I mentioned earlier how there's different text sizes that you can manipulate. So I have this really huge sticky note if I really wanted to um, make something really, really known. So yeah, that tool is right here, and something really fun is that they actually um, will match whatever color you change them to. So if I make this black, um, it'll be black now. But yeah, moving right along. Um, to connectors. Connectors are linking together different related objects. So in this case, you have that situation we talked about earlier, where they've made this diamond a question, and each of the two rectangles an answer to them. So you can follow this convention if you're ever making a diagram. You can continue to have this pattern of shapes indicating what kind of thing is being discussed, or if it's a question, if it's a decision, if it's something else, um, and then different colors mapping to different maybe flows or things here. Um, the green is like a positive answer and the red is a negative answer. So you can press shift C and drag to draw a connector. Um, okay, actually, wait, press shift C and drag. I don't actually know how to do that, <laughs> but the easiest way to do it is just to drag it from here and pull it right there. So I, when I click on this and hover, it's going to give me that option. And then I can also use the X tool. Um, here I've pressed X, I'm on the connector tool, and then these nodes are going to pop up. Let me do that. Now, this is, this one really makes sense, um, but it's very helpful. Um, and something to note here is all of these elbows that make it really easy to move these the way that you want them to. So we want this to be super, super janky. Go all the way up here, go all the way around. I can do that really easily. Um, like before, we had cursor chat, which exists in both Figma and FigJam. It's the same tool. You can go ahead and press um, the slash. And start typing something. We're not all in the same file, so you're just going to see yourself right now. Um, but this is a really easy way to just chat while you're walking through different things. I kind of like lurk on people's areas and type a message to them, and they see it and acknowledge it, and then I move back to my own area, which is really helpful. Um, and another thing to note with cursor chat is that you can type, and then if you press enter, it'll automatically like clear the existing text for you, um, so you don't have to keep like control A like deleting everything, which is helpful. Yeah, you can exit by either clicking or pressing escape. Yeah, any questions about shapes, connectors, anything there so far? Cool, it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already tried this, you can go ahead and mess with the emote and the stamp wheels. So with the emote wheel, um, I have all of these different icons that I can go and just press and hold, and hopefully the lag is not awful <laughs> on Twitch. Um, and if I'm on a file with someone else, it's just easy to, to wave to them, um, to, to laugh at anything that they're saying. If you're on an audio call at the same time, it's really helpful. And then with stamps, um, I can add these tiny little icons everywhere. Um, and something that I didn't realize for a while is that if you click and hold, it gets bigger. Um, so you can express your love or gratitude or whatever to people in different ways. And also, you'll notice that one of the stamps is actually a picture of your avatar. This is really helpful if you're doing something like voting. You can go ahead and just pop down a picture of your avatar um, really quickly and really easily. So we mentioned earlier also um, this kind of components, libraries, assets tool that's right here. Um, it's the same icon that we use in Figma where it has this fancy diamond, this kind of four diamond icon. If you click on it, you're going to see a lot of the um, existing libraries that you can use of different stickers. So you can see the ones that I use a lot um, whenever I'm making a um, file that is for like a meeting or for a particular project. Um, you can pull them in. So let's go ahead and find one that is more interesting and in that it's editable. Um, so yeah, so this is an example here um, of a... Uh, component that you can actually edit. So once I've dragged this in, I can change the text um, to actually make a meeting agenda for whatever I'm doing. So uh, today we're learning FigJam um, by following a demo file um, and practicing all of the tools. And I can change the action items here. You get the gist, um, but I can basically have all these numbered lists, all these bolded lists going on in here. Um, and it's an easy way to interact with other people 
um, through these kind of different stickers that they have going on. Um, I'll go ahead and drop in something else. So for example, there is a really fun set of items somewhere in here, but maybe I can't find them. Yeah. Here, this one's cute. You can put your text in this burger. Yay. Um, but yeah, play with these um, as much as you want. You can try to interact with um, libraries that you personally have turned on. I don't have any libraries on in this file right now, I believe. Um, but if I did, I could access them and I can also manage any libraries that I would want to. So actually, yeah, here, let's turn on slide deck template. So now if I wanted to, for some reason, make slides within FigJam, I could go ahead in here and then um, go here to my libraries and pull in a slide deck example. So I can have this come in here. Um, this is probably not the best example just because it's a slide deck and you probably won't be doing that. Um, but with any kind of project you have going on, this might be really helpful. And the last bit that we have right here um, is to copy base from Figma design um, to get really quick feedback and edit text. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to actually grab something from in here. Um, again, these are all slides, um, but it'll get the point across. So I'll take this one. Um, and let's say that I wanted feedback from my team on this particular slide. Um, I'll go back and do that example as well. Um, but here I can paste it in. You're going to see that everything is um, basically preserved. I can change the text like I mentioned earlier. Um, and then I can add notes here like I really like this GIF when it was playing earlier. And then I can doodle some stuff on it, add anything that I want. And then if I want to bring it back into FigJam, I'm just doing Control C, copying it, not as a PNG, just as a normal item. And then I can paste it in here and you're going to see that it's going to show up as a different icon. It has a um, sticky note icon telling you that it's a sticky. Uh, and then you can still edit the text like you could earlier. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look at this as well, um, where you can play with this example. Um, and you can see um, this button that somebody grabbed from Figma into FigJam has auto layout applied. Auto layout is something that we're going to be talking about next week, but it basically means that your objects can dynamically resize. So you see here as the text of this button gets it comically long, the button is actually resizing with it, um, which is a really critical part of making flexible designs and making dynamic designs, especially for things like web and mobile, where a lot of the times, you're, not everybody's screen is, the same, screen is the same number of pixels. So it's really critical to make sure that your designs are able to scale. But yeah, that is basically FigJam. I will show you also um, the high five. So here I'm holding H. There's nobody to high five me in this file. Um, but I can try really hard and I can swing my hand around. Um, and then I'll also show you the timer. It's right up here. If you go to the sparkly menu, click on timer. I can set a timer to whatever I need it to be. Uh, I'll set a three second timer, I guess, just to show you what it's going to look like. Um, and the audio should play. It does that. And everyone that's on the file at the same time would have the same reaction. Um, and they'd all see that it's going. So that's FigJam. Any questions about how to use the tool, um, different ways that you can use the tool, anything like that? Yep. We're going to learn next week. I believe it's next week. Any other questions? While we're here, actually, I'm going to also show you. Um, what was I going to say? Um, our one of our like meeting note files, um, but we are going to go back first and talk about some examples of kinds that you can use FigJam beyond what we just talked about at surface level. Annie? Yeah. One more time? Oh, um, I think most of the ones that indicate that they have editable text write it. Like this one says custom text on it, and the one from earlier said like your text here. Um, I think that's probably the only real way. Like you could just mess with them, but usually the people who made these um, 
the ones that are here by default anyways, people who are hired to make these indicated any time that you can change it. So like this one says your text here, this is your text here, this is you got this. Um, so some of these are editable and some of them aren't. That's my best answer. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, um, so going into some examples of use cases for FigJam. Um, templates, again, we really want to push that you can use content that already exists. In fact, the whole lecture today is telling you why it's okay to reference other people's content. Um, if you're ever feeling stuck or you want a place to start, you can access the templates that they have in the toolbar or on community. Um, diagramming is something that I keep saying and then haven't really shown you a real example of, but diagramming is a really key function um, in having all these shapes and connectors built out. Um, so an example of a case where you might want to do a diagram is if you're starting on a project and you're trying to get a sense of what the problem is. Um, so say you're working with you know, a particular restaurant like for this midterm and they want you to make a delivery app for them. You can think about what is it going to look like if you're a user walking through this app? What's every screen you're going to see? What's every decision that you're going to have to make? And then you can diagram all of those out with these shapes and connectors to show um, you know, what the flow is going to look like for any given scenario. So if you've ever used a flowchart, which I think probably most of you have seen one at some point, a lot of them are just branching depending on different decisions or different states that exist. So if you say that you have an app, you can start with, do you have an account? If you don't have an account, it branches off and goes to one account flow and one sign-in flow. So you can think about it just as a way to get ideas out of your head, to get sense of a problem, and to get sense of, like, take stock of where you are in a particular situation. User personas are also a helpful thing that you can do in FigJam, just a way to record information um, without having to have all of the fluff that kind of exists in Figma, like all of the extra tools that you would be using. Um, you don't have to be distracted by them, so using FigJam gives you a pared down way to just get in with the text, get in with the images that you have, and really nail down all the information you need for a persona. Also just fun stuff. There is a file on community um, called Haiku Composer that lets you just kind of drag out objects and it really feels like a physical space. I think that's one thing that FigJam is really aiming to do is to replace the physicality of a whiteboard. So being able to just drag things around, being able to stamp things, being able to react to things, um, just having fun with that. And like we talked about earlier, whiteboarding. So while FigJam and its tools can be used to create organized diagrams, really complicated mind maps, you can also just use it messily. So the real goal is to be able to just get everything out of your head when you do a brainstorm. That's why I always say brain dumping, because I just kind of throw everything out of my head into the paper, or into the file, um, without having to worry about how it looks. So FigJam has all these pre uh, prescribed ways for things to look, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and I'll show you really quick some examples of how we've used it this semester without letting everyone see the really um, like small details about what's going on in the files. Um, but in our Figma decal projects, we have, for example, this start of semester all hands file, which is shown in the slide, where we split it up into a couple of sections using lines in order to say like what we're going to be doing first. So we started with a quick like game that was just a this or that, like deciding what people liked more. These are really taking your sweet time to load on Air Bears 2 right now. Um, but yeah, we had like a quick agenda um, and then we had all these different things. So with this game, we just had two items. So uh, the fonts, Papyrus and Comic Sans, people had to put their face sticker next to things that they really liked. Some people went really ham on some things. Like I don't actually know what was going on here or why this happened, um, but yeah, it was just a really fun way to get everybody used to the tool, and maybe your TAs might do something similar um, this week. Um, but it's also a really practical way to do things. Like, um, I had listed out all of the lectures and decided which TAs are going to be able to make it to which ones. Um, so we're able to use that kind of name feature um, to pop down um, anybody who is able to attend certain lectures, and then just their name is attached to it without having them all like Slack DM me that information. It's all um, put out in a way that's easy to understand. And I won't zoom in too far, um, but you can see all of these like plus one stickers that are all around this file um, to show basically when people need to do things. And then here we have like, we were voting for what times to make the lectures and we just voted by doing this. So yeah, big jam um, in action for the way that we did it in our class. Um, and then we also had like screenshots that we pasted in about the application and then we left, um, I think comments as well to discuss things. So we used the comment tool um, to put things like this. But yeah, that's. That's the only peek you're going to get at how this class runs. 
Um, but those are examples of how you can use Trigem to its fullest extent. Um, but yeah, with that, I think we are at the next section of class, which means we're going to take a five minute break um, before we get back into it. Any questions before we go into that? Awesome. Five minute break. We'll be back at 7.52. Let me turn my camera off now.
Hello everyone, uh, we're back, so uh, thank you for bearing with us. Today, uh, we're actually having Jago teach this next part of the lesson, so give it up for Jago. Give it up for Jago. Um, he's going to be talking about Figma community, um, and he is the best person to talk about this. So, I'll let him take it away. Hi guys, uh, I'm one of the teens for the semester, I'm Jago. I'm a senior, studying Congress Science, and the reason why I'm teaching this was because I interned at Figma as well. And also on the community team specifically, so I volunteered to teach this part just because I know a lot about it. So yeah, so we'll be introducing community. Some of you might heard, have heard of this, might have not. If you like looked around on the your homepage of Figma, you might see on the right the left hand side. So I'll be going over what that is and how you can use it to your advantage. So what is community? Uh, Figma community is a space for all users to discover resources find inspiration, and support other creators who are creating content for our Figma community. Uh, Figma wants to, be, wants to make design accessible for everyone, so this is a part of the mission as a way to uh, execute that. So different users, uh, Figma users contribute to community by publishing their own files or developing plugins for everyone to use. I'll explain what those different resource types mean. And you can, if you just like search or like browse around, you can find different uh, resources such as UI kits, wireframes, uh, the templates that for FigJam that he has mentioned, and there's like, a lot out there if you just like look around. And think of it as like the Dribble or the Behance of Figma, but on Figma for Figma. So there's like for now, there's three types of resources that you can find on community. The first type is files. So community files are essentially just copies of what you have on your drafts. Um, but they're published to the web or to the my community, so users can look at look at uh, how people have constructed their own files, and then you can duplicate it for yourself, so you can use it yourself and copy it to your own uh, your own drafts and use it however you see fit. There's also plugins. So plugins are third-party extensions. I think it's basically similar to Chrome extensions, where you can add it to your workspace and help you. Quick and make your experience using Figma or FigJam quicker, faster, and more efficient. So users will install the plugin, and then you can access it on the um, on like the the win the menu bar. Um, how do you access the menu bar on Figma on Windows? Not sure. Not in the menu bar on Windows. Um, but whenever you're on a Windows computer and you want to use a plugin. Uh, you would just right click and do plugin. There's not really okay. a way to do it. Okay. Um, oh. Me? Both of us? Oh, hello. Oh. Sorry. Um, for Windows, uh, there's not really an analog to the like Mac menu bar. So for Windows users, if you want to use a plugin, um, you can just do a right click um, and select your plugin that you want to use. Okay. That's the answer. No, no. Yes. Thank you. Um, and yeah, lastly, our prototypes. So last week we covered prototypes, and it's basically when you press play, you get that uh, view of like a phone or wh whatever screen you set it as, and people publish those directly as uh, community files. So you can essentially they're still files, but you're viewed as a prototype. So for some, some for example, some people might post a, a mobile prototype or a slide prototype if it's like slides, and you can play it. Uh, directly on the Figma community, and I'll have like a play icon on the right hand side. So, yeah, this is Jeff. So, if you go on the right hand side, there's a community tab, and if you've gone it, you can like scroll and like look for the different resources that are available. And again, yeah, it's on the right hand side. So, you can use um, when you explore a community, there's different ways you can explore. You can either search for specific files, creators, so for example, like you search Figma decal. You find all the resources for our webs for our class, or you can look at specific tags at the very top. You can also go to the Explorer page. So if you scroll down here, it'll show like basically like an Instagram like feed of all the different of either recent files or people that you're following. And you can also view when you go onto the, each specific page, you can look at the file more in depth, or you can also look at other people's profiles to see what they have made. And what they've liked. So this is just a breakdown of what community looks like. So this is the home page. At the top, there's the filters for which will filter out 
the specific uh, files or plugins that are catered for that tag. I think a search. And then this top part is interchangeable depending on what Figma decides. Uh, so for now, it's education related and accessibility related. Um, so there's resources and uh, files and plugins and like big gem templates for that specific purpose. And at the very bottom is the explore page where it's the people that you follow or whatever, whatever is relevant to you. And then when you click on a file, so if you click on like, you know, for example, a file or a plugin, uh, you'll be directed to this page. Uh, I'll go over this in a demo in a bit. And it'll give you more information on what the file is, the description. Uh, you can also comment on it. Um, you can like it, duplicate it for your own to save it to you, or your own files. And there's also some controls. You can like zoom in, see if there's any comments directly on the file, things like that. And on the bottom right, there's the the, side, the other information regarding like who it's made by. Uh, it can also be more than one person, so it will have like the entire list of all the creators who have contributed to that file, the different tags that it's tagged under, and like uh, share links. So a big concept on community is that there are creators who contribute uh, and publish their resources. So everyone on Figma can choose to opt in to create a custom handle. Uh, or create a custom profile by claiming a specific, specific handle like Twitter. So you would uh, like add Jago Pang is my one. Uh, and you can, you, if you have to type it in to claim it, and once you claim it, you can use it to publish your own resources. And you can also like, follow, and uh, comment on other resources. So duplicating and installing plugins does not require a profile. So you can, without a profile, you can still like browse Figma as you normally would, or browse community, but if you want to interact with the public and have a social pre presence, it's suggested that you claim your handle. Also, because it's relatively new, there's more likelihood that you get your, the name that you want. So I would definitely suggest uh, claiming your handle, especially if you're thinking about like following other creators or just like post it, publishing things yourself. Yes, you can publish your midterm projects. And we'll go over more about like publishing in future lectures. So what can I use community for? So you can also use it to look for inspiration on what to design and see how others use Figma. I've seen like examples where people create like whole vector graphic images that are like with complex gradients that look 3D. And you can like, because they publish it, you can see like how specifically they make the shapes so you can learn from them. Um, so when, because when you duplicate it, you can exactly see all the layers, all the shapes, all the colors they use. You can also quicken your workflow if you download specific plugins. I'll go over what um, the, the types of plugins that I find useful. Uh, one that one I find really useful is the Better Font Picker. So if you notice on Figma, like when you choose a font, uh, you like. Yeah, so like it doesn't, you know how like Adobe Illustrator or other programs, it shows like, it shows what the font looks like, but here you have to like manually look at each font. So there's a plugin for that, that will like generate, um, will generate all what the files, what the font looks like for each font. Yeah, better font picker. It's in the name. Oh, unfortunate. It's a broken Windows, apparently. Uh, hopefully Figma does something about it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Fairly, there's templates. So on FigJam specifically, you can search for templates. So if you go here, there's this template icon. This is very new. This was released like this month. And these are, a lot of them are sourced either by Figma or from Community directly. So you can uh, either look here or look on Community directly. And as I said, you can use these to kickstart your meetings if you don't want to think about to what type of meeting you want to have. And you can also use that for your your files too. And lastly, you can also look at design libraries, UI kits, li uh, wireframes to kickstart your design process. So all the times, it's really difficult to create an entire like, system of a UI system, for example, fonts, colors, buttons, every single element in a web page. That's a lot of process, so all the time people will post their resources so you can 
use that as a starting point to make your own design. So maybe like change the colors, change the fonts, things like that. So I'll demo and then I'll ask any, uh, open the floor for question, preliminary questions. So yeah, on the right hand side, there's a community. So, oh, I guess you're, oh yeah, okay. So at the top is uh, the featured plugins and files. So, for example, if I click on a plugin, so it will show like the title, you can like it, you can install it for your own uh, Figma, Figma workspace, and there's some description on like what it does, and what, yeah, what bugs it has, if that's relevant to you. And you can comment it, as you see a lot of people have commented on this one, like, oh, this is great, very simple plugin, yeah. So let's say I install this. So now plug it installed into your workspace. So if you go to your workspace and then you load a plugin, it should be a uh, contrast. So you can, if you click it, it'll load um, a plot like the extension essentially onto your Figma workspace, and it'll be like a, usually a modal. So it'll be uh, its own like separate uh, feature essentially, and you can like use it to do whatever the plugin says you can do. In this case, it's to check the contrast ratio between certain items. So if you look at like two different like frames or objects, you can see the contrast between those two. And this is useful for accessibility. I think that's a future lecture. Um, but yeah, you can definitely look around the different types of plugins that exist out there. And in a, late, in a bit, we'll recommend a few plugins that we find we might find useful for your projects. Uh, also, yeah, I'll also demo what files look like, or duplicating files look like. Yes, please. Yes, do that for your homeworks. For example, like, ooh, I like this free icon pack. Maybe I want to use it for my project. Not sure. Um, so I can, yeah, so if you let it load, uh, you can see basically, like, interact with it without actually make, like, making a copy of it. So on the right, you can go through the different pages. If there's any, you can just like drag around, zoom in, and see all like the different, I guess in this case, icons that they have. And if I duplicate it, it'll make a copy it. I'll do it to Aces count. Yeah, it'll make a copy directly into your workspace, and you can access it within your drafts. Oh, this is, yeah. Let me go home. Yeah, it, it's in your recent or it's in your drafts, should be the first. Yeah, the first one. But if you open it, it's essentially your own version of that file. And you can edit it um, if it loads fast enough. I'm not sure. Oh, oh wow, this is a paid. <laughs> There's a paywall, apparently. <laughs> uh, wow, what a scam. Um, <laughs> I think one row is not locked. The first one is yeah, the first one is free to use. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can copy. Oh, should be control. Yeah, copy. Let's say I want this icon, and then. I want to put it here. Yeah, now it's locked on my own files that you can use. Yeah. So that's how to duplicate files and use them for yourself. Uh, does anyone have any questions for now? For sure. So, so the question is, would I use should you use plugins or if you're just starting out? Uh, so the answer is depends how comfortable you are. Generally, it's I wouldn't say it's advised just because it might come. Yeah, like you said, might confuse you if you're just starting out. You should definitely look at community if you want to find 
a lot of people have posted uh, what do you call it tutorials on community like the one from Kelly that was on community so you should definitely look at those files if you're just starting out but in terms of plugins I would wait until you're more comfortable and you know what you're trying to look for example like if I know oh like right maybe uh, like naming everything takes a while there's probably a plugin out there to help name things faster so pl like plugins I would say are often things if you have sp if you have a specific use case of mine you want to click in I would go to a plugin but yeah, for stressing out I wouldn't worry about that much Mm -hmm. So plugin, I wouldn't say it's cheating because it's just an autom automation of your workflow. In terms of like taking someone else's files and like using it as yourself, I think the like if you because it's publicly available, you are they usually have license to use it. But it's best if you credit them. For example, oh, I use this file from this place because you, especially if it's like an icon that you clearly did not make yourself. I would definitely reference reference those in your within the file itself. Um, especially for your homework, I would definitely write like, oh, I use these files. Um, yeah, but it's because it's like publicly available, you can use it. But just give credit and make sure you're not like posting as your own, for example. Yeah, there, yeah, there'll be an inspiration section. Oh yeah, so in the future lecture, in lecture 10, we'll cover how to publish something if you're interested and how to remix. So remix is essentially duplicating someone else's file and adding your own version spin on it and publishing that. And that's like tagged as a remix on, Figma, on community. Also, Figma is currently developing widgets. So it's in beta right now for FigJam. So it's essentially what you see on editor, like those plugins. But there's going to be FigJam versions of that. For example, like a Spotify widget that might come out or that's like the example widget. Um, but yeah, it's in beta. I checked it's released online. Um, and we'll, if it comes out, we'll cover it. And also talk about my Figma experience and ACES, if we can, our Figma experience over at that point in time. Yeah, if there any other, other questions? Okay. I'll go over some examples that you might find useful in your midterms, and I'll, I'll try to make choose one for each prompt. So the first one is a brand style kit. So I think in homework two, you guys had a start on the, the brand style kit, or like making your brand guidelines for the logo, font, and colors. Um, in this case, it's a more fleshed out version of it. I think this is prompt one, making a brand. Uh, so yeah, this is the file, if you go into the, yeah, so in the, this one has like, basically, that homework, but extrapolated for different types of things, for example, all the different types of fonts, like header, or even, like, even more, I think in the homework it'll have like three, also like, where to use the logo, let me like zoom in. Or like, like in this case, as if it goes a bit very specific, like how the colors apply to different, um, like how much of one color should use, what does the, like, like, oh, here's like all the, what the letters look like in the font. You don't have to go with the specific, and I think in the prompt it's not that, not that specific either, but this is a very good like reference point to like how to make it, how to correlate a brand guideline. And oh yeah, he's also, they also include photography, like what types of photos match the brand, and what type of uh, like feel. Like in this case, like duotone, feel, and there's also an like example one in the file as well. So this is a very good like starting point for your for the first prompt, and I think you have to also make like an asset based on the brand, um, which is the second one. So the second one is posters. Yeah, it's a poster series. This is also more for inspiration. So this person, oh, yeah, this person used one font and made like several posters of it. 
I just find it really aesthetic, which is why I included it. And this is also, again, more inspiration-based. But you can, like, specifically see, like, how, how did they make this gradient? If you, like, duplicate the file, you can see, like, oh, how did they make this gradient? How did they make this inner glow? How did they, uh... Yeah, you can, like, look into the file to see how they did something. If you want to apply it to your own posters, or if that's the asset that you're trying to make. I think that's also the second prompt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can just, like, look around. The third one is, a. Uh, well, I think another problem was the illustration prompt. And this is like a illustration library that is created. Um, yeah, it's created. Um, let me open it. So yeah, this is like a flexible illustration system. So you can like mix and match different uh, skin tones, hair colors, hairstyles. Yeah, hairstyles, mouth, earrings, all that type, all features of a face. Uh, and yeah, so it's like more of a library rather than like a specific like, oh, here's a bunch of humans that we've made. But this is very also, yeah, you can see like very cute, um, and it's very, you can tell like, you can tell like the, this system is very flexible to make various illustrations. Uh, this is one, one type of, I'm not sure if this is a, I would submit this, something like this as a homework for the visual, for the illustration prompt. But I'll definitely also use this as a refer po reference point, like, oh, if I want to make it flexible, I could do something like this, make it mix, mix a match to suit whatever brand I'm making. Uh, the fourth one is a plugin. This is like my favorite, one of my favorite plugins. It's called Artboard Studio Mockups. Especially if you're making posters or different assets, you can mock it up. So a mockup is essentially a, a rendition of what it looks like what it could look like in real life. For example, if you made a, if you want to make a cup, if you made like a cup pattern, you can mock it up to make it, to show what it looks like if it's actually on a cup. So this is a plugin that you can use to mock something up. Not sure how to describe that in other two words, but you should definitely check it out if you want to make, if you have, let's say you have a, you want to, one of the assets is a billboard ad. You can find a mock up of a billboard ad and then put your image onto that mockup. And then if you, you'll probably submit the final photo of that billboard with your design on it. And you should install this. If you're comfortable with using plugins, you should definitely install this plugin. I find that very useful. and just makes your design look more polished and elevated. So this one is if you're doing 304, which is the web or mobile ones. So this is where you, this is a uh, both the file and the plugin. So this is a very well known design system, the Material IO thing. Material, yeah, Material Design System by Google, and they have they've uh, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think you yeah, know you could, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically like the this image gives a good glimpse of what it does. What it is is basically all the different types of Patterns that you might find. No. Unfortunately, but if they had published them to community, then there would be. Um, yeah, we could ask the um, Andy said we could ask the current TAs that are former students um, to show them if they are comfortable with doing that. Um, so we'll try to share those on Slack. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of days, um, as long as you're comfortable. Okay. Um, why? Yeah. 
Um, basically, if you look, yeah, there's like a bunch of examples on the thing. Uh, let me open this slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the other examples are more like interesting finds that were put in last year's or last semester's um, slides. For example, like you play games, Catan, if you make a resume, you play Tetris, and yeah. No, but yeah, those are just. Thank you for having me. Any other questions or anything? Anyone not have a way to see the slides? I, I can. I will literally like hold my computer up. <laughs> Wait, are you able to see the slides anywhere? Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, this next one is really visual. So it will be helpful to see them. Um, yeah, so Twitch is still going on. Okay, everything is fine there. Okay, so apologies for this error. I'll, I'll check in with the um, Jacobs Hall staff to see if there's something we can do about this since it happened two weeks in a row, or I guess three since we were here last week. Um, but yeah, so this next part, um, if you want to navigate to the finding inspiration slide, uh, it's green. It looks like this. Those are the slides that we're on right now. It's kind of um, we're going to talk about ways to basically um, distill your ideas and research into a cohesive design approach. And sorry for too much, I'm moving my computer around right now. Um, so I'll just do this also, if this is helpful. Um, so getting inspired is really a huge part of um, you can hear oh, Okay, so um, starting a project is hard. We know that. It's really difficult to dive into something with... Not a lot of context, especially with a pretty open-ended prompt like what we've given you today. Um, so with that, we want you to use the internet, use resources, sorry I keep walking around, um, to find inspiration and find things that you like. You know, Think about when you were looking at an advertisement, when you were looking at an Instagram post, why do you like it? What kind of speaks to you about the thing that you're looking at? Use all of those things that bring you joy or that make you feel emotion and find ways to put that into your own work. So going to the next slide, um, learning from peers is the key way to do this. You don't have to do everything yourself. You're not stuck in a think tank. You're not stuck in a black box. We want you to leverage the internet, leverage the you know information superhighway um, to find anything that's going to help you with your processes. Um, so I just realized that this whole like part of the lecture revolved around me showing you guys stuff. Um, but basically, here are yes the slides. Yes. Are there no slides? There's no slides on Twitch. Okay. Yes. Okay. Since this is not working, I think we're going to actually... Hmm. Huh? Um, okay, so Twitch doesn't see anything right now. Okay, that's not super helpful. I think what I'll do is... Maybe find some time later tonight and record the rest of what this lecture would have been, and I'll post it. Um, you won't be required to watch it. This, is, this whole part is about finding like inspiration online and learning how to take from other um, sources. Then I'll be doing like an example of how I might approach like making a mood board. Um, it's only going to be like a 10 minute ish video, um, but if you want to watch it, feel free to. Um, otherwise, it's not super required. We'll make sure that the attendance form doesn't have anything about it specifically. Annie, was there something else? Um, no, this happened exactly at the same time two weeks ago, though. Oh, until I moved. I unplugged my computer. I have no idea. Um, let me actually just plug in the HDMI cable again. If for some reason that causes it. Is it back? No. It says it's streaming. Do you see my face? Huh. 
it's okay. Um, maybe, but it's supposed to share my whole screen. Do you see anything? Okay, at this point, it will take longer to troubleshoot than for me to just re-record it tonight. So, um, again, it'll be like a 10-ish, maybe 15-minute video because I like to talk a lot. Um, it'll be completely optional for you to view. Um, it's just going to walk through basically the stuff that is on this slide, which is Figma Community, Dribble, um, a site called Save It, Pinterest, and then a couple of other sources. And then I'll just walk through like how I might go through different sites and to find things that I care about. Um, but yeah, we're all going to go ahead and just end lecture here today. Um, really quickly, I'll introduce um, what we're going to be doing this week. The homework this week is still to work on the midterm. There's no additional homework. Just focus on that. Please come to office hours if you have any questions. Feel free to leverage um, the Slack as well um, to answer any questions. Um, and then lab six is midterm critique. So that does mean that we want you to be able to bring something into lab this Thursday. It does not have to be final. It does not have to be a full screen. Don't even need to be at mid -fi yet. Bring in your ideas. Bring in anything that you're thinking about. If you have something to show, feel free to bring that. It's all the better. We're going to be all in a Fig Jam file um, in your lab teams, and you're going to get a chance to show what you're working on and then get reactions and get feedback from everyone. If it turns out that a lot of your lab is like in a really starter state of the project, that's okay. Still use it as space to talk about your ideas. You know, maybe other people are thinking of something that you wouldn't have thought of. And don't feel like anyone is cheating. Um, I think that's a really big thing is that sharing your ideas is important. I think especially in a case like this where everything is really hypothetical, uh, we're not necessarily actually making these apps for these um restaurants. So feel comfortable sharing your ideas. Don't feel like anybody's against you. Um and Credit anybody for ideas that they um, provide you if you end up using it in your midterm. Um, but yeah, we hope that you're able to be open with each other. We hope that you have fun using Fig Jam together um, and just getting an idea of what everyone's working on. So the secret word for today is going to be, I never think of these ahead of time, billboard. That will be the secret word for today. B-I-L-L-B-O-A-R-D. Billboard is the secret word for today in honor of the mockups plugin. Um, and we have no real um, additional announcements for today um, other than just please come to office hours if you're interested. You don't have to have any questions. We're just bored and would like to talk to you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for lecture today. Sorry again about this. I'll talk to Jacobs about it and um, find out what's going on. Um, but have a lovely week. Um, we'll see you TAs this Thursday. And we'll see you next week, same time. Bye.